All right, so I just wanted to go over some basic troubleshooting formulas and how to properly hopscotch an electrical circuit. So this is a typical air conditioning circuit. I'll go through our components here. So, you know, this is just a model. It's not a engineering model by any standard. It's kind of just like a real basic oversimplified view of how to hopscotch electrical circuits properly and how to check windings for power. And I'm assuming you have some experience when you're watching this video and you kind of understand what these components are, but I'll just go through them real quick. So imagine this is our line side power coming in and this is our load on this side of this bus bar here. We have a basic transformer, thermostat, uh, basic relay. Um, this would be our indoor blower motor. This would be our compressor, compressor and condenser fan contactor. And this is obviously our condenser fan. And then uh, these uh, 20 amp fuses are just examples of typical switches you'd see in any HVAC circuit. So like this 20 amp fuse down here is would be typically like the thermal overload, the internal thermal overload in a compressor. And typically there's one on the condenser fan too, but we just need one. So this would be our internal overload on the compressor. And then these would be, these two 20 amp fuses here would be our high and low pressure switch. And then this fuse up here would be a typical like, uh, you know, transformer fuse. Cool. So, yeah, so I just wanted to get into some basic uh, troubleshooting scenarios and how to properly hopscotch through these electrical circuits. So, all right, basic troubleshooting formula for compressor not running. Confirm. The controller is functional and doing what it's supposed to be doing. Here I see that my thermostat's calling for cool. My fan is on auto. Next, go to your disconnect and check power between line one, line two. Check power between load one, load two. Confirm control power between a common, not ground. Confirm control power at contactor coil. Confirm power going across coil, I mean across contactor switch. I mean, sometimes you can even go to the terminals on the compressor and check between the terminals for power, usually between R and C. If it's three phase, then you'll check between all three. Okay, assuming the compressor is not hot to the touch and the internal thermal safety switch hasn't opened, and assuming the capacitor is fine. It's typically a telltale sign that you have a problem with the winding. At this point, you would ohm out the winding or check each terminal to ground, assuming you already know how to. Alrighty, so another one we'll do. Indoor blower motor not working. So we'll go to our controller, confirm it's functional and it's it's calling for what it's supposed to do. All right, fan on auto. Our next step, step two, go to the disconnect. Okay, check power between line one, line two. Check power between load one, load two. Confirm control power. All right, we are 
confirming this circuit has a fan switch so we're going to confirm coil voltage at the coil not between ground in each terminal or we'll check the power at the coil all right now we're going to check power at the winding okay you know assuming we've you know combed out the windings or whatever there you go bad blower fan cool so i just want to go over a couple more basic troubleshooting scenarios so for this one we have a a dead contact recoil so firstly start our service call at the thermostat Let's um, you know, confirm it's calling for cool. The fan's on auto. Uh, I hear the indoor blower motor running. No cool. So after step one, checking the thermostat, you're gonna go out to the disconnect on a package unit or a split system. And you're gonna go check power between line one, line two, if it's three phases, check between line one, line two, line three. Check between. Oops. Cool. So what I did is I, uh, I uh, messed with the board a little bit before. So we're gonna hopscotch the circuit and find out exactly what I did. So, so after checking the thermostat, we will go to between line one, line two at the disconnect. Check for power. We'll check between load one, load two at the disconnect. We'll confirm control power. Okay, got 24 volts coming in and out of the fuse. Okay, we're gonna go to our contractor coil, check for voltage, because the switch could be stuck. Okay, between the two, I have no power. Okay, so right away, I know that it's not calling for the contactor to come on, so let's check power at the contactor. Okay, we have power there waiting to go through the switch. Okay, no power on the other side. So I know it's not calling, so there's an issue here. So, typically what I would do now is I would assume uh, maybe pressure control is open. So before hooking up a set of gauges, you could quickly uh, hopscotch through this circuit. What I usually do is uh, go to a common somewhere. I'll check the power coming in the pressure switch. I'll check pressure coming out. I'm gonna check power coming out between common. Okay. All right. So I can see that I have power going to figuratively our high or low pressure switch. All right. So I have power there, but no power coming out. So I would have an open pressure switch right here. Let's just say this is a low pressure switch. So. This circuit would be off on low pressure. You know, see, I didn't even have to hook up a set of gauges. I could, I could tell just by checking across the pressure switch. Typically, these would be on like a circuit board or something like this. And you see your pressure switches are down there. I mean, it's really easy. You just check, you know, power coming in, power coming out. Same thing, just like a fuse, go to common. You have power coming in the switch. No power coming out of the low pressure switch. So the switch is open. Okay, that's our problem.